This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, Rem Bohr tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins according to the scripture. He was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Spirit of the Lord's upon me. So he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me to heal the broken heart, preach the livers to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, set at liberty, then men of bruise. Word is nigh thee, even then your heart and your mouth is a word of faith. So I preach, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's the power of God unto salvation. To every one that believeth, to the Jew first, also to the Greek therein. There's a righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Amen. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, or other devices. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And to my right co-host, Terry Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. To my left co-host, Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. And to her left co-host, and, and the Greek apostle. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And to Colorado on the wire, Kathy Kerman Courier. Pardon me. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. We better get the buys out here. <laughs>
Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast. We're moving in the direction that the church is not familiar with. Nobody touches these things. They ignore them. They, I don't know what they do. I know what this ministry does. And I know why. I was anointed at the tomb of the garden. June 16th, 1974. With the words, Acts 1-8. In my heart burning. Katie, would you read Acts 8? Sure will. Acts 1-8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. That anointing is in me now. That anointing is in Terry Brown. That anointing is in Kathy D. That anointing is in Anthony Reese. Simple. God anointed me, and you can't help it. It gets on you if you're hanging out with me. Amen. 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 So, we're all moving in the anointing that I received uh, uh, June 16th, 1974, at the tomb of the garden on Sunday morning. Amen. Now, we're anointed to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Anointing to do that. Katie, would you read Mark 16? I sure will. I bet you people say it's not in the best manuscripts. It doesn't have to be. It's everywhere in the Bible. Amen. 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 So would you read it? Mark 16, verse 15, and Jesus, well, I'll read in verse 14. Afterwards he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. Thank you. And that, those words are all through the New Testament. So don't believe these pseudo-intellects that tell you that Mark 16 is, was not in the best manuscripts. Doesn't have to be. It's everywhere else. Amen. So, I want to say, this place, this recording that we're doing is top, 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 top class. Top anointing, top faith, the faith of all four of us moving to the live wire. It's coming through. That on live live stream. Streaming everywhere in the world. Live. With that anointing, the faith of this place. It is set at the best. So if you want your devils cast out, if you want to be healed, if you want to speak in tongues, whatever you're believing from God, you listen to this broadcast. And it'll sure feed your faith. Amen. It'll anoint you. Amen. And, join, Amen. and join your faith with it. Join your faith with it. It's available. So, today, 
We happen to be after <clears throat> a bath. Uh, thank God, we're after perversion. Perversion in the church worldwide. We happen to be dealing with Romans 1. Change the nature of women. Natural use is what it says, right? Natural use of the woman against that which is natural nature, right? Right. We're after that. That, my friends, is sin. And if you're having problems uh, with pain, it's because our prayer ministry is the power of God. And the power of God is on your sin. Amen. Or sins. Bringing it out. It's on your devils. Cast your devils out. Amen. You feel poking in your body. It's a devil wanting to get loose, get away. Amen. Trying to run. Let it run. And pain. It's pain. Your pain will do it right. It'll come right out of your body. Has to. That is a devil coming out. And that's what we do. Cast out devils. And we watch the sick get healed. Amen. The Lord is working with us. Confirming uh, the word with signs following. Amen. You might have itching, or you itching. might have itching, itching, itching. Right. you might cough, right. yawn, right. <laughs> uh, sneeze, you may get a headache, you might get nauseous, all these things. It's not the devil coming and attacking you because you're praying. It's the devil in you coming out. Amen. So when you pray and you join your faith with us, uh, and these things go on in your body, rejoice. No, you're, you're doing something. You're accomplishing something. Amen. Let me tell you, it says in verse Corinthians 15 that the sting uh, of death is sin. Amen. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of Sin is the Ten Commandments. Amen. Amen. So if you're wondering why your church has sin increasing, I'll ask you this question. Are you preaching the Ten Commandments too? You're making them sin. We, the, the law makes sin Greater. That's right. Galatians 3 says the law shuts up faith. Right. Shuts it up. And add to that Romans 5.20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Right. It gets worse when you teach the Ten Commandments. Makes sin worse. Right. Right. So you wonder why your kids are sinning? Are you making them live by the Ten Commandments? Or are you preaching the gospel to them? Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You know, mothers and fathers want to do well. And they think they are when they make you learn how to quote the Ten Commandments. They're making you sin more. I'm telling you the truth. Whatever is a faith, pardon me, faith is not the law, and the law is not faith. Amen. Amen. Thank God. The law is not faith. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody got anything to say? Praise God. Amen. I'll tell you, when I grew up, we had a term that I heard often in school, and that was, this person is a PK. 
a PK. Preacher's kid. Preacher's kid. And they were all, and, and a lot of them were worse than any of the other kids. Sure. And we could never figure out why. Because they taught them to take amendments. Because they were under the law. That's right. Amen. The Bible says the law is a schoolmaster to lead us Amen. to Christ. Is to lead us to Christ, not to live under. I heard Brother Graham say once, America's full of guilt. Amen. Full of guilt. Well, of course, America's full of guilt. Did you know the law produces guilt? Amen. Did you know that? The law produces guilt. And so, We've taught the Ten Commandments all my life. I remember when Billy Graham started preaching. The law will make guilt worse. Amen. Amen. I went to church where they taught the law. But thank God some of them had some faith. Not all. Even the Apostle Peter said that uh, they that you couldn't follow the law, and right. not our fathers couldn't follow the law. Right. We can't follow the law. And when they were talking about the Gentiles, he said, "Why do you want to put a yoke on them that even we can't do?" There you go. We can't do Bridget. it. That was the Apostle Peter that said Is that. Is that Acts 15? That's yes. Somewhere in there. Right. Amen. And Paul called it a yoke of bondage yes. in Galatians 5. Yoke Amen. of bondage. Amen. And then you're saying to yourself, I can hear you right now, because I said the same thing. You mean that we, we can just go around and sin and not obey the Ten Commandments? We can just do, we can just do whatever we want? We can, we can sin? No. Jesus said, or the Apostle Paul speaks in Romans 8, you must be led by the Spirit. And you get in that Spirit by believing the Gospel. And the... Yes. Would you read... First Timothy, what is it, one nine? Yes. Amen. The law. First not... Timothy, yes. Chapter one, verse nine. Uh, we'll we'll back up and um, verse seven says, well, uh, verse eight of uh, six. Verse five. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Amen. Folks, you, if you believe the Bible, you'd be a lot less likely to have troubles you have. Amen. But if you believe your Sunday school teacher or your preacher that has no faith but preaches the Ten Commandments, no wonder your children are a mess. No wonder your church is a mess. You preach the law, and by the law is a knowledge of sin. Amen. Yeah, that's how you're teaching them how to sin. Oh, I, I can hear them. I can hear them screaming now. Amen. Get this guy up of there. He is so wicked. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. The wicked one saying that. Amen. You know, in the book of Romans, it says, whatsoever is not faith is sin. That's right. So if the law is contrary to faith, which you can find, read Galatians and read Romans, you can find that the law is contrary to faith, it shuts up faith, 
So if whatsoever is not faith is sin, you, you're going to sin if you're not walking by faith. You're in sin. You're not going to. You're in sin. Amen. And, and when we read in, in Matthew, the last chapter, and the last chapter in Mark, what does Jesus say to preach? He says you preach the gospel. You don't preach the Ten Commandments. Jesus didn't, he didn't say preach the Ten Commandments. Mark 1.14 says preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. What is the gospel? That Jesus died according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised again according to the scriptures. That's what we preach. That's what we believe. That's what we follow. Not the law, not the Ten Commandments. They were put away. We believe and we walk in the gospel. What did Jesus preach? He preached the gospel. Turn to Mark chapter 1 and tell them. Show them what Jesus preached. He's our example. We should walk in his steps. Amen. Amen. John, uh, Mark 1, verse 14. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent you and believe the gospel. He didn't preach the law. He preached the gospel. He didn't say preach the word. Amen. He preached the gospel. He preached the gospel. And 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. We, I, every program I open, Amen. I'll tell you what the gospel is. Amen. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to the scripture. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. That is the gospel. Amen. There are no others. And Luke 4, 1, or 4, 18, Jesus, his first sermon, stood up, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Amen. Not preach the Ten Commandments, not preach the law of Moses. He was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. And that's what we're anointed to do. And what is the gospel? Power. Amen. Power. Gospel of the kingdom is power. Amen. Amen. And the law shuts up faith. And you mix faith with the gospel. Would you, can you read Hebrews 4 2? Hebrews 4 2. 4, 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. And he's talking about those in the wilderness. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Yeah. Did you know you've got a church? And you preach the letter. You don't preach the spirit. You don't walk in the spirit. And you don't mix faith with what you preach. Because your heart doesn't have faith in it. You got a legal heart. Amen. You preach the letter and not the spirit. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And that's why there's no miracles in those churches. Well, that's exactly right. Paul in Galatians makes a wonderful statement. In verse 5 of chapter 3, he says, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and that takes faith and the gospel, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? Do you mean we're supposed to see miracles in our churches? Yeah. Yes. Amen. And they come by the hearing of faith, and that comes through the gospel. Timothy says, right. Timothy says, you have a form of godliness, but deny the power Amen. thereof. Amen. But you don't want power. Amen. Anthony, would you read Second uh First Corinthians two no three six? Second Corinthians, didn't it? Yes. Three, six. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six right. says, Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, 
for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Do you see that? Did, did you know it's possible that you can minister the New Testament by the letter and not the spirit? Amen. Right. Did you know you could do that? Did you know that's most churches? Amen. Amen. If I preach the gospel, I know Paul said he was glad it was preached no matter what it was. But you're, you need to have revelation of the gospel. You need to have faith. You need to have the Holy Ghost speaking tongues. You need to be equipped to do God's work because we're moving <coughs> toward a great time of uh, tribulation. What? Tribulation. But we're moving there. But a great time of spiritual growth of the gospel preached. The power of God. Amen. There's a time in Jeremiah 5, verse 23 and 24, I think it is, where the former and latter rain is going to be preached and it's the appointed time of the harvest. Amen. The big harvest is good ahead of us. The big revival, preachers say. Amen. And I don't deny that. The big revival, it's a big harvest. Amen. I've said it for years. And I don't believe the Lord uh, disagrees uh, that I say it. I say God has to show Amen. great power in these last days. The greatest of power in these last days to give those that are on the earth uh, live to give them the opportunity to live in the greatest power that's ever been preached. Amen. Amen. Doesn't it say in Romans, didn't Paul say that the Gentiles are made obedient through mighty signs and wonders? Right. It'll bring people into obedience when they see the mighty signs and wonders. Amen. The power. Now, Smith Wigglesworth says there's a great revival coming. Yes. Lester Summerall says there's a great revival coming. When Smith Wigglesworth said that, he was with, he was with Lester Summerall. Is that right? That's, that's when he said, to, he said to Lester, he says, I see. I see. If you remember, he was giving Lester Summerall an embrace, a hug, because Lester Summerall was getting ready to come back to the States. And those two were friends. They spent a lot of time together. Amen. And when they were saying their goodbyes, uh, Smith Wigglesworth actually wept for a little bit. And then when he had Lester Summerall there, he said, I see, I see a revival coming. Greater Amen. than any that has ever been. He said it'll cover the earth. Amen. And he told uh, Lester, he said, I won't see it. He said he would. Yes. Smith right. Wigglesworth said, I you will know, not Lester see Summerall, it. You know, Lester Summerall is a friend of mine. Amen. He's watered life twice. Amen. Two times. And he spoke some deep things with you. He and I talked about some serious things in the church. Amen. In the ministry, serious about a preacher and his wife being a Jezebel. Amen. That's what we talked about. More than one. Two. He brought out. He, he and I had breakfast. Last time I talked to him in person, he brought up two of the situations. Both of them. He told me what went on. They said, Doyle, that's a Jezebel, isn't it? I said, Lester, that's a Jezebel. Another one, he said, that's a Jezebel, isn't it? I said, that's a Jezebel. Lester Summerall trusted me and God enough to ask me those questions. 
and gave, gave me examples and said, that's a Jezebel, isn't it? I said, Lester, that's a Jezebel. He and wanted you to travel with him. He wanted me to fly to uh, that Arizona. Arizona. And you said you could not go. Phoenix. Right. He said, get on the plane with me and fly to Phoenix. I'll get you back. I said, I can't. I can't go. I'm too busy. I've got things to do. Amen. Once he wrote me a letter, Lesser, he said, come to camp meeting and spend time with us. I said, I can't. I can't. I've got too much to do. The Lord sent me to do this, and that's what I was doing. Loved him. The last time I talked to him on the phone, well, long after that, he got sick. Amen. And he went to heaven. Amen. Did you know, my father, Lyle Davidson, I believe, is correct, went to heaven in February, and, and Lester went to heaven in April, I think. I think so, yeah. Amen. Those two guys... I hated it. I hated they were off the earth. You know what God didn't want me to talk to them anymore? They had already said everything he wanted them to say to me. Amen. The Lord said, I'm teaching you. And that's Those are tough days. Tough days back in the 70s. 70s. One, two, three, four, five, six. One time, I tried to talk to a preacher. He wouldn't talk to me. And I was heartbroken. He had many years of preaching. And I was in my car, driving home, weeping. The Lord said, he can't help you. He can't help himself. He said, get the Bible, and I'm going to teach you. That was a father talking to me. Amen. The law says, all will be taught of God. Amen. All will be taught of God. Amazing, huh? Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. What time is it? It is 10.35. 10.35? Amen. Are we ready to do some ministry? Amen. Such a people pray. Amen. We have a woman that's watching us on live stream. We're ministering to. Thank God. This power reaches her. Amen. This faith reaches her. This anointing reaches her. And we've gotten several messages yesterday that she's not the only one God has been ministering to. That's right. Yeah. God is setting people free all over the world through this ministry. Amen. Did you know May 22nd, wasn't it? 17. The Lord said, I've chosen you and sent you to the far corners of the earth to deliver my word without fear or despair. Amen. Jesus. Jesus said that. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the man, Jesus. Amen. The man, Jesus. Amen. The mediator between God and man. First Timothy 2 tells us. The man, Jesus. The man, Jesus. 
I feel for you people. I have compassion on you that you believe Jesus is part God, half God, or all God and all man. Who ever heard of 200%? Amen. That gets you a red check mark in school. No such thing. Yeah, you'd be in big trouble. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank God. Bless God. Amen. Never heard anything like it. That Jesus is half God or part God or all God and all man. My goodness. You talk about heresy. That's a damnable heresy. A big one. First John says if you do not if you cannot say that Jesus came in the flesh, not part flesh, came in the flesh, that is the Antichrist spirit and it is not of God. Sure does. It it's the way it is. Amen. Romans five, verse fifteen, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man. Amen. Jesus Christ has abounded unto Amen. many. One man. Amen. It took a man to mess it up and it took another man to fix it. Amen. Now, Jesus was equal to God. Amen. Amen. Right? That's right. Jesus, Colossians 1, created everything. Amen. Created you. Amen. Created the world. Created man. He made, made everything that he might have preeminence Amen. in everything. Amen. Did you know he can judge you? He will judge you? But no, he said he didn't want that. The Father didn't want it. So what happens? The words Jesus taught will judge us. Amen. We're judged by his word. Amen. The words he preached judges us. Amen. Amen. He didn't want any part of it. The Father didn't want any part of judging us. So the that the word will judge us. Amen. Amen. Can I appreciate the Bible having everything in it you need to know? Everything. Anything that you need to know besides what's in the Bible, God won't tell you. But you won't be writing a book on it. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Glory to glory. Thank God. What a tragedy that Jesus is not a man. Tragedy is you say that. He is a man. Thank Amen. God. Amen. He has the spirit of Jesus in that body. He has the spirit of Jesus. But he right. has none of the powers of a God. Amen. Thank God. Philippians 2. Uh, may I read that passage. This, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Amen. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He emptied himself of all that godly privilege. Amen. I think at least two of you, maybe Anthony, two, watched me one day stand behind a pulpit and squirm. Oh, yes. You remember? I remember that very well. What? What that scripture was? I think it's Hosea, isn't it? Uh, it's Habakkuk. Was it Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 4? Yeah. Habakkuk 2 4. Yeah. Left hand side of the page. Huh? Yeah. It's Habakkuk 2 4. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's Habakkuk 2.4. Yeah, read that. <clears throat> Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. But I was studying here on this platform, been in this building since, uh, what, 81? 81, yeah. 81. And I'll tell you, I thought, I can't say this about Jesus. This, this, I, I like to never said it, but you know what? I would turn this way, this way, and God was saying, you're going to say it. Well, I did. And what is it? Uh, Hebrews 5, they learned obedience by the things he suffered Amen. Amen. and was made what? Perfect. Was made perfect. Right. Yeah. Was yeah, made that, perfect. Verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8 says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. In verse 9, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Well, verse 7 says, in the days of his flesh, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared, though he were a son. So see it right there. Verse 7 says, the days of his flesh, talking about the son. He learned obedience by the things he suffered and being made perfect. I was talking to a preacher once, and there was a theologian, very well educated. And I was having dinner, Pat and I, he and his wife, and I made a mistake saying Hebrews uh, written by somebody. I don't know what I said. I said, that's wrong. He said, I'm glad you corrected that, because nobody knows. Who wrote Hebrews? Well, I can tell you this. You can read Hebrews. Uh, you can find Paul, evidence of Paul and Timothy. And, uh? You can. Well, uh, and, yeah, right. In Hebrews 4, 15. For we have not a high priest, and it's talking about Jesus, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, our weaknesses, but was at all points tempted like as we are. Jesus was tempted just like us. That's true. You know what? You can't tempt a perfect person. <laughs> it has to be something in the soul. And it says, it talks about we're tempted with the lusts of our own hearts. And that's what causes temptation. Amen. Jesus was tempted in all points. He couldn't be perfect. <laughs> And then he said in John 5, I can of mine own self do nothing. Yes. So if he were 100% God or even part God, he could do something. But he said, I can of mine own self do nothing. Amen. Well, while we're at it, Psalm 22 says he was in hell. Amen. Psalm 88 says he was in hell. Amen. Psalm 16. 16? Yes, yeah, says, Thou will not leave my soul in hell. Amen. Mm -hmm. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Yes. I am caught, what is it? I'm in the cords of death. What about Acts 2? Amen. Paul, yes. Peter preaching? Peter preaching. Amen. Thank God. Amen. And you can't kill a God. And what? You can't kill a God. Right. And you can't tempt God either. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, are we ready to pray? Jerry by one of my boys Amen. on ministering song. Amen. And the four of us will be praying along with Jerry Byers faith. And one of my boys, they've got faith, they're on there. Right? Amen. Jerry buys a water by a boy. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. He's a water by boy. When he came to me 
I prayed for a singer, and he came. He was an opera singer. He was good, and he was a good actor. And he didn't, I couldn't tell he had any faith. I didn't do a song for me once, and I didn't say anything about it. I thought, I don't know if you're going to be able to sing or not. But one day, he kept, he and Kathy, his wife, my daughter, they, uh, they'd ask me, uh, was there faith today? They'd lead worship. Uh, yeah, they'd, they'd lead singing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd we do today, Dad? <laughs> Amen. It's a good thing. Good singing. No spirit. They just turn and walk off. Feel terrible. They never left. Amen. One day, things started working. Oh my goodness. And they can get up and sing. And I want you to know things could change. So let's hear them sing right now. What Come, let us worship the king. Then we'll get Terry by. How's that? Thank God. 
but his song and Kathy, God let us worship the king. That's what we do. Amen. Now let's have Terry by and water black boys. The rest of water by boys. Were there nine of them?
gaze in his eyes, saying is no one worthy to go.
he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Satan's like a roaring lion Roaming to and fro Seeking whom he may devour The Bible tells me so Many souls have been his prey Caught in some weak hour But God has given us today His overcoming power Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world On that day of Pentecost A mighty rushing wind Blew into the upper room To baptize all of them With a power greater than Anyone had known And I'm so glad we got it too I wanna tell the whole wide world Now tell them with me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world God is greater than the wisest man Greater than the power of sin Greater than the gates of hell Greater than anyone can tell Greater than the richest king Greater than anything Greater, oh greater Greater, yes greater Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Thank you Father, thank you Lord, thank you Thank you, Father Thank you, Jesus Thank you, Father Thank you, Jesus Thank you, Father Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you. Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Be bold to plant of you to the knowledge of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you. See you tonight. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327. Plano, Texas, 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.